Let's talk about progressive supranuclear palsy. So this is the most common Parkinson plus syndrome, meaning it's more common than multiple system atrophy or corticobasal degeneration. It's a progressive neurodegenerative disease and the main pathology is an accumulation of abnormally phosphorylated tau. So remember, this is not an alpha-synucleinopathy like idiopathic Parkinson's disease is. The main risk factor is age, with the mean age of diagnosis at age 65 years old. Uh, almost no one gets diagnosed before the age of 40. So one of the main features is postural instability and falls. Sometimes these patients can walk with an extended posture instead of being stooped, and so they'll fall backwards and injure themselves. Bradykinesia or akinesia is also a, a hallmark symptom. Rigidity is common as well, and resting tremor is actually not usually prominent, although action tremor can be. And there is also a lack of a long-term response to levodopa, in a proportion of patients, sometimes levodopa can be partially helpful, at least in the beginning of the disease, but then it'll lose effectiveness later on. Patients can also have hypophonia and dysphagia. Another hallmark is supranuclear palsy, which is the inability to look up or down on command. And so you may have trouble walking down the stairs or eating food and being able to read. This symptom can first start with just having slow vertical saccades and then progress to having the inability to look up or down. The eyes can still look up or down on passive flexion, so if the neck flexes forward, the eyes can still look up, and if the neck uh, extends passively, then the eyes can still look down, so this is preserved doll's eyes. There can be square wave jerks of the eyes, which is when you're trying to fixate on an object, you'll have these subtle saccades. Some other eye-related abnormalities can include a decreased blink rate, blepharospasm, and eyelid opening apraxia. These last two can be very functionally impairing because uh, you essentially will be blind because your eyes are closed. There is also a progressive dementia, which is a hallmark, with deficits in attention and frontal lobe function, so you can have apathy and disinhibition. One other emotional symptom can be pseudobulbar palsy, which is where you may laugh or cry at inappropriate times. For imaging, one thing that they sometimes test is that there is atrophy of the midbrain relative to the pons, creating what looks like a hummingbird with the beak over here and the wings over here. And so the pons is relatively preserved. There later on is also generalized atrophy. Uh, PET scan will also show hypometabolism starting in the midbrain. And then later on, it can involve the other characteristic uh, portions of the brain, such as the basal ganglia and the frontal lobes. So autopsy is the diagnostic gold standard, and so you can see widespread neuronal loss and gliosis, as well as the accumulation of tau and neurofibrillary tangles. One thing that they sometimes test is what it looks like on a slide, so tau can accumulate in astrocytes and create what's called tufted astrocytes. So the treatment is supportive. Occupational and physical therapy can be helpful. Uh, there are some solutions for the eye-related problems. So if there is supranuclear palsy, if you can't look vertically, then mirror prism lenses can help you see your food or help you read. For the decreased blinking, artificial tears can be helpful. For the blepharospasm, you can try using botulinum toxin. And for the eyelid opening apraxia, sometimes crutches on the glasses can help hold the eyelids open. Dietitians and speech therapists are very important for managing dysphagia. And for prognosis, unfortunately the prognosis is not great. 
Uh, it is a progressive neurodegenerative disease and the patients do become dependent on others for care in a few years and usually die within a decade from presentation.